I want to accomplish two things in this video. I want to show you how to use Luminar 4 as a Lightroom plugin when you want to replace the sky in an image. Secondly, I found after playing around with Luminar 4 for a few weeks is that if you use your own sky, meaning you're not going to use any of the skies that come with Luminar 4, you're using your own sky, sometimes you run into some issues. In this video, I'll also cover those issues and how you could fix them. Now I have this image here, nothing special. The sky is particularly boring and I want to replace it. Now I have this image that I got from Adobe Stock and I like that sky. And the first thing you want to look for is make sure that the lighting is coming from the same direction. Now if we look at my image, the one I shot, uh, the lighting is obviously coming from my right. So the uh, light was, the sun was over to my right, uh, lighting the scene. If we look at this image from Adobe Stock, if you look closely, you could tell it's coming from the right as well. The right side of the clouds are lit up and then the left side is darker. Now, the second thing you need to look for is white balance and color temperature. Make sure that they look similar. This image is kind of a hodgepodge, but it's, it's a little warmer compared to this image. This image is really cool. So what we need to do is adjust the white balance on either or both of these images so they're closer together, uh, closer to each other. Then it will look better. Now I could come in and try to make this one cooler, or I could come in and try to make this one warmer, and I think I'll just make this one warmer. So I'm going to go to the Basic tab. Now I already did some adjustments to this. I just need to deal with the white balance. And what I'll do is I'll just go to the drop down and a shot, and I'll look at Cloudy. Cloudy will warm it up uh, quite a bit. And then I'll kind of look over there and then look back over here. And that looks okay. Maybe we'll try shade. Shade will warm it up a touch more. And I think we'll go with shade. All right, so we have our two images. I like, this is my original image and I want to replace the sky with this sky. Now, when you send the image to Luminar 4, you really can't send them both. You have to send one. And then within Luminar's 4 sky replacement filter, you're going to have to pick your sky. Now what we'll do to make it easier is I'm going to export this sky image to my desktop so I could easily find it. So I'm going to bring up the export dialog by hitting shift command E. And I happen to have a preset that I created. It's called straight raw file export. All that means is it's going to copy this image from where it is on my external hard drive. And it's going to send an exact copy of that to uh, my desktop. That's the way I have this preset set up. So it's going to have the same exact name. It's going to be a JPEG file. It's going to have the same exact size, same exact um, uh, resolution and everything. And it's going to go right to my desktop. So I'll just click export. And you can see it immediately did it. It's just a copy. And there it is right there. There's that image on my desktop. So we'll go back to Lightroom. And we'll go back to this image. Now I want to send this to Luminar 4. I'm just going to right click on the image go down to edit in and then down to Luminar 4. And this dialog box pops up. Now I modified this uh, dialog box and what I like is I like to use a file format as of TIFF. I like the color space ProPhoto RGB, 16 bits per component, the resolution of 360 because I use an Epson printer and Epson recommends that when you're uh, post-processing images that you try to use resolutions of 360 that works better with their printers. So that's what I have there and compression none and I click edit. Now what is going to happen, you look at the progress bar in the top left hand corner, is Lightroom is creating this TIFF file with those specifications. It's gonna take a second or two and once it creates this TIFF file though, it will open the TIFF file automatically in Luminar 4. And you can see down here in the film strip up there was, there was that TIFF file. And when it opens up in Luminar 4, we're gonna have the looks film strip along the bottom and I'm not going to use a look, so I'm going to close that down by clicking right there. I'm just going to jump right in and replace the sky. So I'm going to go to the second icon from the bottom, creative, or from the top, I'm sorry. Go to AI Sky Replacement. Now I mentioned we're using our own sky. It's on my desktop. So we'll go to Sky Selection. We're not going to use any of their built-in skies. Go to Load Custom Sky Image, and we'll go to this. It's right to my desktop, that Adobe Stock image. Click Open. It's going to replace the sky. Now, I don't like how it's there. All right, it just doesn't look right. Mainly, it's not positioned horizontally correctly. So I'm going to go to the horizontal position slider right here, and I'm going to move it to the right 
to push this up. Now, as I'm doing that, can you see like in the ice down here? Could you see that weird kind of look that's going on there? This is one of the issues you may encounter when you're replacing the sky with your own sky. Specifically, uh, in this original image, you'll notice there's water and a little bit of land in it. So all that is kind of bleeding through on our image in Luminar. So you could see it as I move this horizontal position. There's, there it is there, obviously. But as I move it down, it's kind of bleeding through. And this is one of the issues you, have, you may encounter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get it down just lower enough so that the, that little hill that's on the far right is gone. But we have to deal with this now. I like the position now. And the lighting doesn't, it looks pretty good. But all this, this is horrible. So we have to deal with that. So what we're going to do is edit the mask. And we're going to go to the brush. And what we want to do is erase it. So we're going to go to the erase brush. These are the brush attributes right here. And what I'll do is now erase it. But what you'll see is when Luminar replaces a sky, it kind of relights the scene to try to match the lighting. But when you brush away this, you're going to brush away all their relighting. And you're going to see now that that ice is now much brighter. And it, it, to me, it doesn't look right. It looks too bright. It doesn't look like it's really matching uh, the scene anymore. So I got to deal with that, that now as well. So we'll come in there. So there, I got rid of all those blotches. But now I have to darken that ice a little bit. So what I need to do is, is just go to Dodge and Burn. And that's in this Pro section. And we'll go to Dodge and Burn. And what we're going to do is uh, start painting. And then we're going to darken. That's burn, all right? And down here, the strength, what I recommend you do is, is use a very like low number, like between 10 and 25. Let's go to 20. And then with that, we have the brush now, and we're burning. So we're just making it a little darker, and I think it better matches the scene. And every time you click down, you kind of make it a little darker. So I'm, I'm building it up. And then we could come in here and make this a little darker, that a little darker as well. And I think it matches a little better. I think that looks a little better. And it actually is making the light look a little more oblique, like it's a little bit more from the side than it may actually be. And it's, uh, I think, it looks pretty good. So that's a little better. There's uh, before and there's after. All right, now we're done. Now I'm going to click Apply. And when you're back in Lightroom, you can now process it from this point if you want. Or I could have stayed in Luminar and did some more filters to it and did some more adjusting. The reason why I didn't, though, I want to show you what you could do that I think will make this go a lot smoother right from the beginning, meaning while you're in Lightroom. And there is our image there. And you may encounter this uh, when you're in Lightroom. You can see this. We have this three lines and this up arrow. If that you ever see that, just click on that, and this dialog box pops up. Just click Import Settings from Disk. Sometimes that happens uh, when you send an image off to a plugin, not just Luminar, any plugin. You may encounter that. All right, what you could do to make this go smoother right from the beginning is go to this image, your sky image. If you have water, land, or anything in it, crop it out. So we'll go to the Crop tool. I'm going to make sure that this padlock is unlocked because if it's locked, it's, it's, if I try to pull it from the top, see how it's going to resize everything and keep that aspect ratio. I want to keep it unlocked and I just want to crop away all the water and land. So it's just up high enough to get rid of all that. All right, and we'll close the crop tool. So now we have just sky. Now I'm going to save this to my desktop. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift-Command-E, Shift-Control-E if you have a PC. Now I can't just do a straight raw file export because it won't recognize the crop. It's just going to copy the image, the original image from where I have it on my external hard drive to my desktop, and it will not include the crop. So I really need to come down here and uh, go to, where do I got to go? File Settings and I go to JPEG. So I'm going to make a, uh, create a JPEG. I'm going to keep quality at 100. I'm not going to resize it. I'm going to keep the resolution at 3. 
I'm going to change this to 360 to match the resolution of the uh, other image that I'm exporting. I'm not going to sharpen it or anything. So basically, I'm just going to create an image that has the bottom part cropped out, and I'm saving it to the desktop. Now, I'm going to save it with the original um, uh, file name. I already have one on my desktop with that file name, so it's going to ask me what I want to do. And I'm going to overwrite it, so I'm just getting rid of that original image. That was there from our previous export. Now I'll go to our original RAW file. I'll right click. I'll go down to Edit In, Luminar 4. I'll keep these default settings. Click Edit. So now you'll see it will go much better and much smoother. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to communicate is if you do have any sky image and it has any land mass in it or water in it, anything other than sky in it, crop it out if you can. Uh, then then use it in Luminar 4 and I think you'll find and you'll see that it's going to go uh, much smoother. All right, so I'm going to close down the looks film strip along the bottom. We'll go to the second icon from the top. We'll go up to sky replacement. We'll go down to, no, we don't want to go there, sky selection, load custom sky image. There's our image on our desktop. We'll click open. Now it's going to there. Now I don't like where it's placed. So we're going to go to horizontal position and we'll move it up, 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 up. You can see those blotches are there, but the blotches disappear right around there. And you'll look now, the, the, we don't really have to relight or burn any of the ice because I think uh, the way uh, Luminar relit the scene and everything, I think it looks better. I don't know if you could hear it in the background my printer kicked on that's because my cat jumped up on the printer and hit one of the buttons on the top of the printer cats will drive you crazy you probably shouldn't get one if you don't anyway there is that we'll click apply and i could again i could do more processing in luminar if i wanted to uh, but for the sake of this demonstration i think that's good and we'll bring it back into Photoshop or into Lightroom. I'm sorry. Again, we have this little three lines and an arrow right here. Click there, import settings from disk. Okay, there's the image, the one we just did, where I cropped out the landmass and water at the bottom. There's the one we previously did. And there's our original image. So, I mean, it's six of one, half a dozen the other, uh, whichever one you may like better. I like this one. I think it. It looks pretty good. And I could uh, process it a little more from here. You know, I could, I don't know, do whatever I want to do. Maybe go to effects and put on a little bit of a vignette. But I think that looks pretty good. So those are some of the pitfalls you may encounter when you use your own sky image. Now, in our next Luminar video, which I'll do in a few days, I'll show you if you have water in the scene and you want to reflect the sky in the water. And I'll show you how to do that. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.